Mad Fox started mapping for Quake in 1998. Since then, he's created a multitude of maps, models, and mods, all with his unique sensibilities and personal outlook. This video is more of an appreciation of his work rather than focusing on one aspect or project. And while making it, I fell down a delightful rabbit hole in researching this one-of-a-kind creator. Late in 2021, I had asked for submissions for the Quake 2022 community preview. When Mad Fox sent me his candidates, I quickly realized these deserve their own episode. Trying to distill Mad Fox contributions to the Quake universe down to a short video has had my mind spinning. There's just so much he's created over the years. Some good, others mind-bending, some baffling, and others that are truly inspiring. What I admire the most about Mad Fox is that if he wants to see something happen in Quake, he makes it happen, mostly by sheer force. A perfect example of this is Captain's Log. This is a single-player conversion of the mod Star Trek The Quake Simulation by Andrew Wiley, which was a multiplayer mod from 1997. Mad Fox wanted to see the Enterprise come to life in a single-player version. He rebuilt the map from what I assume was a decompiled version, fixed errors, added areas, and relit everything. Next, he added a menagerie of Star Trek bad guys like Borg, Ferengi, and even Orb from Quake 3 Arena. Those models are a combination of reskins, conversions from other mods and games, turbo squid downloads, and of course, his own models from scratch. That's a big part of Mad Fox's process. Convert, mash up, or just create what you need. Ow, ow. Now, I'm not exactly sure why there are rats on a starship, but hey, it's Mad Fox. Resistance is futile. In the fuel, incorrect strategy. It's a treat to fire up a total conversion in 2022 since there are so few created now. And remember, this is just the first of three projects he sent me from the last couple of years. In 2019, Mad Fox posted an early version of his Chasm development kit. This is a playable, Quakeified version of Chasm the Rift, but only the first level. The game is sort of a forgotten gem released in 1997, and I've seen many references to Chasm over the years from the Quake community. The dev kit uses converted GZ Doom formatted models and includes new Quake C to bring the monsters to life. The dev kit is in limbo at the moment and Mad Fox has moved on to other projects I'll get to later in the video. Next is MF Qtest dev kit. This one is a bit complicated. The original Q-Test was a multiplayer-only test of Quake released in February of 1996. From the beginning, there were monster models and other goodies buried in the pack files of that release. In 1997, Brett McLeod released Classic Quake, a total conversion that brought some old assets from Q-Test into a mod for the game. You could play single player and multiplayer with the old HUD, sound effects, and weapon models, but not the original hidden monsters. In 2008, Megalol took this idea a step further and integrated some of the original versions of the monsters in their Q-Test 1 mod. Finally, in 2021, Mad Fox released the beta of his MSQ test dev kit after more than three years of development. This release adds the monsters that were missing from those other projects into a true single player interpretation of Q test. Think of it as what Quake might have been in an alternate universe. As Mad Fox calls him, the Elden Ogre has a shield with a deadly charge attack and wields an axe against the player. The Serpent is a flying snake-like creature with a tail-slashing melee attack, and of course, lasers. Mad Fox also incorporated the Dragon and Vomitus from other mods to round out the bestiary. As he tells it, it was my long-tempted wish to convert them to active monsters. What I love about this project, besides the Elden Ogre and the original placeholder sound effects from Nine Inch Nails, is that Mad Fox made two maps for this partially based on the very first screenshots released for Quake in 1995. He had to take some artistic license, of course, but it's fun to see some of the unused areas come to life all these years later. These levels are classic Mad Fox, large, old school, a bit confusing, and always surprising. So let's talk about his maps. 
As I researched this video, I quickly realized how divisive many of his projects are. Many people love them for their quirks and sheer creativity, but just as many find them confusing, too long, and even amateurish. Mad Fox has taken a lot of abuse over the years, whether it was harsh critiques or just snarky comments on message boards. There was even a speed mapping event devoted to Castle Mad Fox, where the mappers tried to emulate his style. And after reading reviews of some of his maps, I can understand why Mad Fox no longer releases them to the public outside of his mods. Look, some of his early maps weren't the greatest. He admits this. I can assure you he hates his speed maps. But everyone improves over time if they persist. Many of his maps are stunning in their sheer creativity and have great reviews. I've played a lot of these from beginning to end, some old, some new, and even though I usually don't like longer maps, I did have a great time playing them. His creativity is undeniable. Mad Fox obviously likes to tinker with Quake, and I've been impressed with some of his exploration. This is an older low-res video, so it looks terrible, but the idea Mad Fox was exploring was a rotating skybox made from a model that encapsulates an entire area of the map. Rotating skyboxes aren't possible in Quake, so this is pretty cool. I also love these customized animated textures used for security screens, and many of the props he's made for his maps are simply amazing. Mad Fox has been criticized for adding creatures like Orb from Quake 3 into his maps, along with Bender from Futurama and many others. But for him, these additions are no more incongruent than having a Texas Chainsaw-inspired ogre next to a medieval knight alongside a sci-fi grunt. Mad Fox has always believed that Quake 1, 2, and 3 monsters all belong in the same universe, and therefore the same maps. And I'm sure he's not the only fan of the series that believes that. For the past year, Mad Fox has been doing models for the upcoming multi-episode epic Mjolnir. I'll post more info on that mod when it's released. He's also working on a single-player adaptation of the Sailor Moon Deathmatch mod. Stay tuned for that as well. So, his creations for Quake are divisive and eclectic. Never boring, whether you love them or hate them. But in researching this video, I've learned so much more about this man that I just couldn't help but want to share. So, here are some fun facts that might surprise you about Mad Fox. He's a graphic artist who has worked in multiple media, including etching, lithography, oil painting, animation, paper craft, and more. He's also a musician and a poet. As far as his Quake creations, his most beloved model has to be the Fishing Ogre. It's an iconic image that defines his contribution to the Quake universe in just a few hundred vertices. It's amazing and should be enshrined in a museum somehow, someday. I love that Mad Fox is still cranking maps out using GTK Radiant. Most of his earlier maps were made in Quark, although he made some in Thread and tried many others. Some of his more recent maps took multiple years to make. I assume this is not working straight through, but one took 40 months to complete. Not four, 40. But I think the biggest surprise of all is that he plays Quake with a keyboard only. No mouse look. Imagine playing through all those levels, killing thousands of Quake monsters with no mouse. During my research, I came across this great quote from Kraythor about Mad Fox's work. What I like about Mad Fox's models is that they look like they are from a B-movie. Very theatrical production quality. They are goofy and not perfect, but unique, and I love them. There's something delightful about a really good B-movie, like Death Race 2000, Troll 2, or The Room. The best B-movies are so bad, they're good. They tickle something deep down in the viewer. And that's exactly what Mad Fox has been doing for the Quake community since 1998.